So, folks, um, people's confidence in the economy is down. Homelessness is up. Things are so bad. Even Tucker Carlson is starting to think twice about capitalism. Uh, Glenn Greenwald asked Tucker Carlson about the Trump movement representing uh, at least in spirit, an alternative to Reaganomics um, in ter in practice, you know, Trump gave all the tax cuts that any other Republican would have given. But there's no doubt that in that movement, there is a certain populism that is some retort to standard Reaganomics. So here is Glenn Greenwald asking Tucker about that very transformation. Oh kind of transformed economic policy. He frequently kind of denounced the classic sort of Reaganomics, this idea that, oh, we should all cheer for the richest people in our society to get richer because a rising tide lifts all boats. And everybody watches Raytheon and Boeing and BlackRock and Amazon get richer and richer and richer, and their boats aren't rising. And it really led a lot of people who have been capitalists their whole lives to at least start questioning, not capitalism as a theory, but capitalism, how it, how it manifests in American society. What is your view about sort of where the populist right is, the Trump movement is, when it comes to these core questions of economic theory and economic populism? I think a lot of people have awakened to the now demonstrable fact that libertarian economics was a scam perpetrated by the beneficiaries of the economic system <laughs> that they were defending. So they created this whole intellectual framework to justify the private equity culture that's hollowed out the country. That's you my personal view. I've Larry seen it up Sharp. close my whole life, so I think it's a fair assessment. <laughs> just lost uh, a lot of the libertarians there. You know, I want to pause it there. There's more, obviously, that we want to show. Garrett, but Garrett, in Gary Johnson just kicked his poodle. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in his interview with uh, Jimmy Dore, he brought up the fact that labor is taxed at relatively twice the rate of investment. And what does that say about the values of a society? It tells you that we value the investor class more than the laborer. And he gets into labels later on where he says something that's quite amazing coming from his mouth, i.e., I don't care if you call me a socialist. Um, but this is why I think in this case, it is important to talk labels because the word socialism and communism is so often weaponized to shut down any reforms of the very capitalist system that he is now admitting is a scam that is designed to benefit the people who have the most already. Like the fact that investment is valued more than labor that is that is foundational to right. capitalist theory that's what capitalism is it's called right. capitalism under capitalism you use existing capital to accrue more capital through investment it, it's it's right. not it's not based on labor trading your labor for money is not capitalism uh investing your existing money in order to make more of it through that investment through the strength and perhaps wisdom in some cases of that investment that's capitalism and so that's why it is important to use these terms and use these terms the way they are supposed to be used but uh i'll take this for now coming from tucker because it certainly seems like he's on the right track uh but let's let's let him keep going um, I think a smarter way to assess an economic system is by its results. So you can assign whatever name you want to the economic system of the United States. You could call it market capitalism. You could call it, I mean, you could call it a whole host of different things. But I, I don't think any of that's useful. Those are boring conversations. I think you need to ask, does this economic system produce a lot of dollar stores? And if it does, it's not a system that you want because it degrades people and it makes their lives worse and it increases exponentially the amount of ugliness in your society. And anything that increases ugliness is evil. And it's just kind of, let's just start there. So if it's such a good system, why do we have all these dollar stores? Dollar store is the, the clear, I mean, it's not the only ugly thing being created in the United States, but it's the, one of the most common and it's certainly the most obvious. So if you have a dollar store, you're degraded. And any town that has a dollar store does not get better. It gets worse. And the people who live there lead lives that are worse. I'm starting so, to think this guy just had a bad experience at a dollar store. And that's what really sparked his political transformation. He, 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 must, he must have bought one of those screwdrivers that breaks the third time you use it. <laughs>
Uh, this see, soup no, ladle you'll, you'll melted in store. my chicken soup. Yeah, exactly. Before you really understand what the quality of the products are, you go into the dollar store, you go, oh, everything's so cheap. And then you take it all home and it breaks like the first time you try to use it. Am I not worthy of a quality soup ladle? I think I am. I do think you? so. Do you? I, I Apparently remember, not. I, I if you do, my you'll mom, give me my dollar and 25 cents back. My mom had the same soup ladle from the time I was three <laughs> until I was 52. Yeah. It just broke This one barely year. lasted seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I, that's what okay. it was. Hey, whatever it is, I'll take it. Uh, I want you to show me. It, 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 when we do stuff on Tucker, you know, you do get a certain contingent that, that you know just absolutely hates Tucker. Um, I want you to show me anyone on the other side of the so-called media, the so-called left media, say anything like this. Oh no, it's I great. Want I you mean, to show I'm all me for it, obviously. A guest that they ever brought on CNN or MSNBC who said anything like this. I mean, who didn't get very quickly fired. I guess the last time was Dylan Radigan. Dylan Radigan went off the reservation on, on the air and they fired yeah, him. That's like what? 2017. That's like six or seven years ago. I mean, that's, that's that was a long probably the back. last time anybody ever went on a corporate media network and said anything like this, whether it be Fox, MSNBC, CNN, um, so you're supposed to hate Tucker Carlson. I mean, I'm not. I, I, I said the other day, to the delight of most, to the chagrin of some, uh, when you go and you worship these rich people, you're making a fucking peasant out of yourself. So I'm not saying, you know, go bow down to Tucker Carlson, but hey, man, don't dismiss him as your enemy either because he's a lot closer to a friend than a lot of people running around claiming to have left of center politics. Well, let's see. He, he goes on. So, and and the, the counter argument to the extent there is one, oh, they buy cheaper stuff, great, but they become more unhappy, and the dollar store itself is a is a sort of symbol. What's what's a physical thing? It's a real thing. It's not just a metaphor, but it's also a metaphor for your total lack of control over where you live and over the imposition of aggressively in your face ugly structures that send one message to you which is you mean nothing you are a consumer not a human being or a citizen and so again i don't know what we call our current system but its effects are grotesque they're grotesque it's, it's wrecked i've been here 54 years and i watch carefully that's my only gift as i watch and this has become a much uglier place, a much more crowded place, a much more hostile place, a place that cares much less about people. So whatever system that produces that outcome is a bad system. And you can call me whatever you want. Oh, you're a socialist. I don't care what you call me, actually. I'm beyond caring about name calling. It's bad, and I oppose it. Well, that's progress of a kind. But the system sure. you're describing is capitalism. What has happened in recent decades is capitalism has been unleashed upon the world, particularly since the fall of the Soviet Union, when capitalism had no ideological competitor on the world stage, and therefore capital felt no responsibility, no sort of prudential responsibility to um, provide for ordinary people, to rein itself in for the benefit of ordinary people. Because back when state socialism was a real thing and a real power and a real threat to capitalism, capital knew they couldn't just railroad the population because then communist movements would take foot here. It could be argued right. very strongly, in my view, that actually it was the Soviet Union that moved the Democrats to the left. While the Democrats were left, it was it was the it was the Soviet Union that 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 pushed FDR to the left. Right. As much as anything else, I'm not saying that we didn't have certain labor movements here that were very instrumental, the civil rights movement, anti-war movements. But the threat of communism as a counterweight to the excesses of capitalism made a huge difference here. And when that went away, what happened? Capitalism was unleashed. And that's the increasingly horrible system that we see just ramming its, its foot right down our throat ever since and so i do think it's I important think to call a solid that out theory what's that it's a solid theory well thank you appreciate it i do think it's important to call that out uh but when did you ever see tucker carlson when did you ever think you'd see tucker carlson saying call me a socialist i don't care i mean that's big that's well, big and 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 you know look i mean there are certain things in there that like i wish He'd have maybe said while he was on fox news of course that's probably part of why he's not on fox news anymore but fox news 
time, how many times did Fox News call Barack Obama, Barack Obama, who picked his cabinet appointees off of a pre-approved Citigroup list? They called him a socialist a hundred times a day, if once a day. I mean, during the campaign, socialist, mm -hmm. socialist, socialist. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, his former place of work, and look, I can't hold him accountable for everything that happened to Fox News. He's not even at Fox News anymore, obviously. So I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, when you have a guy who swam in those circles for so long, who used the word socialism and communism to demonize and delegitimize anyone to the left of Mitt Romney, it's important to see them coming along this way I hope he goes even further, but this is progress of a kind that, like you said, you will you have not seen in any other mainstream media figure, much less the water cooler zeitgeist TV anchor of our time. Yeah, this is like if Herman Hess had written a novel about the spiritual journey of a cable news host, that novel would be called Siddhartha Carlson. Uh, he's going on this whole arc and you watch in a few years, he's going to be wearing saffron robes. He's going to be washing the feet of the poor. He's, he's on this whole journey, actually very much like the Buddha. He started out a rich kid and, uh, you know, you're just watching this whole evolution and spiritual transformation. I, I think the begging bowl is not far away for Tucker Carlson. I think you're you're gonna see him on the streets of Calcutta pretty soon, <laughs> uh, on on his road. No, his I think what sets Tucker Carlson apart from a lot of his peers is he's genuinely curious, yes. and he's not afraid to change his mind, right. and he's not afraid to admit that he was wrong. Um, and that's what makes not, him an interesting host. That's why he had such high ratings. It's interesting to watch a guy who you don't know what they're going to say until they say it. Who wants to watch right. Sean Hannity? You already know what Sean Hannity's going to say before he opens his mouth. Right. And um, I, I think for a lot of these guys, like Sean Hannity, they're in showbiz. They're right. in showbiz. Look, even even just doing this, I, I yeah, I, I can I can see because you start to. I mean, we're doing this pretty hardcore for a couple of years now. Um, yeah, like you could tell who means it and who doesn't. You could tell who's just putting on a show for the cameras and who isn't. And uh, most of these guys, particularly at at those channels, at, at CNN, it seems like more of them actually buy this bullshit. But when you go into these channels that are intended basically to be the booster arms of these two political parties uh you're putting on a show like i i'm i'm not convinced they mean even 25 percent of what they say it's a show it's a show joy reed goes on the air she puts on the joy reed show oh this is what the libs want to hear sean hannity goes on he's putting on the sean Hannity. oh this is what republicans want to hear do they mean it do they even think about whether they mean it any more than an actor doing lines thinks about whether they mean it or whether they sold it. I think they think more about whether they nailed it, whether they sold it, whether they had a good segment. It's all bullshit. Carlson actually went on the air saying what he thought. And sometimes a lot of the time he was very wrong, but over time, and this is why he gained so much audience. I mean, back when John Stewart just blew up his show, his and uh, Carville uh, Crossfire just made them look like fools. Tucker Carlson is probably the last person you ever would have thought would have had this kind of light bulb right. moment and realized that everything he ever believed was bullshit. But he did. Where is this going to end? Where is this guy going to end up? Is, is he going to be a leftist by the time he's done? Is he going to be a left populist? Because a speech like that, he's more than halfway there. Please clap.